when it comes to car-centered web series, Motor Trend's Roadkill was definitely one of a kind, giving birth to several projects, including a physical magazine and a variety of spin-off series. This included the highly successful Roadkill Garage, which, despite having a similar concept as the original show, leaves some fans flabbergasted at not seeing Mike Finnegan anywhere in it. So whatever happened to Mike? Why isn't he on the show? Why did the original Roadkill show end, and what are his current projects? Keep with us to get all the answers. Considering that off-screen dramas aren't a rarity in the entertainment world, many people immediately assume the worst when they stop seeing their favorite stars in a TV show. However, this isn't really the case of Mike Finnegan and Roadkill Garage. As it happens, Mike has never been a part of the cast, and instead, Steve Dulcich has been co-hosting it with David Freiberger since its premiere in 2016. There is really no explanation as to why Mike isn't in the show, despite having hosted the Roadkill YouTube series with Freiberger for the longest time. But it's not too far-fetched to think that they just specifically chose to work separately on Roadkill Garage once the show's idea took shape. That being said, Finnegan and Freiberger are not on bad terms, as after Roadkill Garage, they kept working together for the original show and its magazine just as usual. If you have been following the Roadkill franchise long enough, you surely know the show started as an online series before leaving YouTube for sure in 2018. However, this doesn't mean that the show was cancelled, as in fact it was leveling up by officially joining the Moto Trends on Demand platform. This was a smart move both for the platform and Mike Finnegan and David Freiberger, as it opened many doors for the project to expand into several successful spin off series and projects. All in all, the original Roadkill show is fortunately still going on strong with Mike and David on the helm. Besides Roadkill, Mike Finnegan is nowadays busy with several projects, such as his successful Motor Trend Plus show, Faster with Finnegan. He also co-hosted the podcast The Kibbe and Finnegan, along with Rob Kibbe, as both friends shared their insights about cars, mechanics, movies, and a lot more. Although Mike left said podcast in late 2018, his most devoted fans can still learn what he's up to through his YouTube show Finnegan's Garage, which has been around since early 2016. Mike's channel is everything one would expect from him and even more. Besides sharing valuable content about his cars and restorations, he also lets his over 800,000 subscribers know about his hobbies and whatever he does while free, keeping his content notably freer and with lots of personal touches compared to his previous projects. Last but not the least, in recent years, he launched the online shop FMS Garage, which offers a wide variety of smartly designed merchandise highly attractive to any petrol head. With so many projects in his hands, it isn't hard to imagine Mike was most likely not interested in appearing in Roadkill Garage. People who came to know the franchise by one of its immensely famous spin-offs surely don't know how important Roadkill has been in the field of automotive entertainment. Despite being described by its creators as guys behaving badly with cars and the show where we play with cars and you point and laugh, it's hardly possible to limit Roadkill as a series only for funsies. While the car experiments led by David Freiberger and Mike Finnegan initially gave off the impression of two guys improvising and coming up with whatever eccentric ideas they deemed possible, the truth is that the show was much better planned than it appears. According to Angus McKenzie, the intention behind Roadkill and other shows released at the time was to revolutionize what was known as online content. I decided that Motor Trend Channel would be like a proper automotive TV channel, something I dreamed about doing for decades, he wrote in an article posted by the network's website. Coming up with the idea for Roadkill was a matter of convincing David to join the project, which wasn't hard considering he was given creative freedom all along. The experiment worked well, and only a couple of years after its release, Roadkill was the most watched online car centered show, gaining a million views per video in a matter of hours. Almost everything is valid when it comes to the entertainment world, especially if it's about pretending some things are real. While Roadkill and its spin off aren't free of these aspects, and sometimes don't let its audiences know the entirety of what happens in taking every project to the finish line, that doesn't mean the show is fake. While it wouldn't be easy to point out what specific builds required so much more than what it seemed, it's safe to assume the mechanic, fixing, and fabrication processes are completely real. As well, Mike Finnegan, David Freiberger, and other collaborators ever featured in the show are real experts in their respective areas. 
besides being as real as reality TV allows it, Roadkill's main attractive points undoubtedly come from the creativity and ingenuity showcased in it. As former editors of Hot Rod magazine, it isn't surprising to know Mike Finnegan and David Freiberger dreamed of creating their own car-themed magazine. As Mike admitted during a Kibbe and Finnegan episode in 2018, the now-defunct online series Roadkill actually stole its name from his and Freiberger's original idea for a magazine. Although a couple of years after Roadkill premiered in 2012, they got their own magazine, it wasn't named Roadkill as they wanted, but Overkill. After experimenting with several names and concepts, in 2015, their Roadkill magazine was finally given the green light by Motor Trend's now former publisher 10, The Enthusiastic Network. Roadkill magazine followed the same content line of the online series, but in a more focused and expanded way given its quarterly schedule, on top of charging its subscribers $9.99 per issue. Although at the time, Roadkill was quite successful as an online series, the magazine was deemed quite risky, even though Motor Trends was quite positive about it, given the network's decade-long success with other publications. We do make a bunch of money in print, and with millennials, they're not opposed to print, they just didn't grow up with it, as TEN's former president Scott Dickey said at the time. Despite the uproar surrounding Roadkill magazine in its beginnings, unfortunately the project was unsuccessful at breaking the barrier between print, entertainment, and millennials. As Mike Finnegan admitted in Kibbe and Finnegan, the magazine faced lots of obstacles, especially on the financial side. It was a really large format magazine that really took paper. I believe it was the most expensive magazine. It cost more than everything else. Even in spite of the bad news, Mike admitted the magazine's concept was risky from the start, not only for trying to catch the attention of a young audience, mostly used to receiving free online content, but also given other important aspects, such as ecological concerns and competing against already established magazines in a highly competitive industry. Regardless of its failures as a long-lasting project and the many difficulties it's faced, Roadkill magazine stayed in business for almost three years before being discontinued in 2018. It also brought lots of joy for Mike and David Freiberger as they saw their dream come true through it, on top of never lowering its content standards. Premiered in 2016, Roadkill Garage is to this day one of the most successful Roadkill spin-offs created. With six seasons on air and more than stable and loyal audience, Roadkill Garage features David Freiberger and Steve Dulcich resurrecting some of the forgotten projects left by the original show or by themselves. However, instead of discovering whatever went wrong with those vehicles and fixing it, they let their imagination run wild by performing some of the most daring and sometimes eccentric modifications. Though not everything done by Freiburger and Dulcich turned out well, it's always an entertaining and educational ride when they're involved. All the creative, mechanical, and testing processes are performed in the farm, which contains not only enough space for the Freiburger Dulcich creations to come to life, but also serves as a classic car junkyard where almost everything from trash to little treasures can be found. Despite starting as a monthly show, the seventh Roadkill Garage season saw it become a weekly show due to its outstanding success. It would be a lie to say Steve Bilsich was unknown by the time Roadkill Garage premiered in 2016. Long before the idea of the show came to light, Steve was already respected by most knowledgeable car fans for having worked for top magazines. Steve's career as a journalist started in the late 1980s by writing and subsequently editing the legendary high-performance Mopar magazine. Given his background in mechanical engineering, Steve easily provided tech research articles while developing some of the most innovative projects in the industry. Just as he climbed up the steps in the automotive and tech development world, he began writing for a variety of magazines, including Mopar Muscle, Popular Hot Rodding, and Guide to Muscle Cars. In recent years, he took the spot of Engine Master's chief editor while also joining Roadkill from 2015 to 2020, both as a star and writer. Besides his extended run with Roadkill Garage, Steve is known for being a host of Engine Masters, an engineering-centered innovative car show which features outstanding projects in the field. Other of his TV projects worth mentioning are Best of Top Gear and the Christmas-themed Holiday Hoopty Challenge car show. Additionally, in 2021, Steve started a YouTube channel which attracted almost 50,000 subscribers in less than a year. Despite it being a roadkill spinoff, Junkyard Gold's informational concept 
makes it quite a different show compared to the rest of the franchise. Hosted by Steve Magnanti, he goes everywhere he needs to find the most impressive and historically valuable cars, while also providing the guys from Roadkill with the best candidates for their eyebrow-raising experiments. Premiered in 2017, Roadkill's Junkyard Gold is the perfect show for Magnanti, whose knowledge in classic cars has made him an authority in the field. When he's not looking for old cars, Magnanti builds customized miniature classic cars at 125th a scale, which he features in deep detail through his show, Steve Magnanti's Supermodels, premiered in 2021. Though most people know him for Roadkill Junkyard Gold, Magnanti actually debuted in the entertainment world back in 2002 in Classic Car Restoration, later making appearances in shows such as Off-Road Adventures TV and the TV movie Inside GT Live. Other successful projects by Magnanti include hosting segments of Shift Takers and his personal YouTube channel with over 60,000 subscribers. Just like Mike's other projects, Faster with Finnegan is a highly successful TV show which features some of his most clever moments as a car builder. With only a couple of days available and lots of imagination, Mike and his co-hosts Michael Cotton and David Newburn take their creativity to the extreme to convert the most trashy-looking vehicles into usable speed machines. However, there's no such thing as big budgets and luxury tools in this show as everything is done in the least expensive way to demonstrate what one could do with just the right amount of skill and imagination. Regarding Mike's co-host's experience in the field, Cotton has appeared in Shift Takers and owns the YouTube channel Midwest Paint and Metal. Meanwhile, Newburn is known for appearing in and writing episodes of Roadkill. However, no matter how new their faces are in the entertainment world, Faster with Finnegan's success has been unstoppable since the show premiered in 2020. As if it wasn't enough to produce a wide variety of shows fitting almost every petrol head's taste, the Roadkill franchise also created the miniseries Roadkill Extra. Although the concept of a series which shows snippets and short interviews to its main stars isn't a new concept, Roadkill Extra goes beyond the limits and has impressively produced daily episodes since its inception in 2017 through the subscription platform Motor Trend On Demand. It would be impossible to sum up all the topics ever featured in the show, as over 1,000 episodes have been released so far. That being said, Roadkill Extra is the biggest proof of how deeply committed the franchise is to the automotive world, on top of providing motorheads all around the world with endless high-quality entertainment. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.